I dang it. I have to get up and put got it. Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready? Ready. Yay! Okay. Welcome back, everyone, to another Craft Blend book review. I'm here with, again, Daniel, my co-host. We're excited to talk about today's book. And today's book is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. <laughs> So, um, Daniel, you're a little better at synopsis, so you go ahead and give this one. <laughs> okay, it's about Evelyn Hugo and her seven husbands. <laughs> the less you know about the book, the more you'll enjoy it. So it's just chronicalizing her. It takes place in two timelines. It's an older Evelyn Hugo okay. um, with a reporter, Monique, and she's going through her life for a, a, a Vanity Fair type, you know, uh, what is it called? Vivant? Vivant? Vivant magazine. Yeah, so she's chronicalizing her her seven husbands and her lives in between that. And that, that's all I want to give. There's like a mystery. It's like, because Monique is a new reporter. It's like, why is um, Evelyn Hugo singling her out? Like, there's that little mystery, and then you know, we get to learn about Evelyn Hugo's life within these context of these seven husbands, right? And I believe like every chapter is a husband, right? Yes, okay. So, just to start out with, uh, what do you rate it? I rate it, I it's one that I've been fluctuating with time. I think I'm good reads, I still have it at five. To me, it's like either a four or a four point five. The more I sit and like, yeah. So yeah. I would go, I would go with a four point five because I I still love the journey. Yeah, I would agree. I think that um, it fluctuates as well, but I think I'm stuck between like a four and a four point five. So definitely like in that range, it's really good. And then obviously there's some things that you know could have been better. Um. Okay. So. I wanted to try a little something a little different this time around and maybe give us a little more of like, you know, um, kind of a timeline of sorts so that we're not all over the place. So let me know if you guys like the way that we're going to do it this time. And, you know, if you have any problems with it, anything like that. So just feedback would be great to hear. Um, so one of the first questions I was going to ask and then we can just take turns answering is how did you hear about the book? Okay. I heard about it at first through like, TikTok slash, you know, YouTube and just people making like really like this is the vibe of this, you know, book. So it was pretty much that. And then it came into circle with both our our radars. And then we're like, oh, oh my God, you want to read it too? Oh my God, I want to read it too. Let's read it together. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, I would agree. I read it out. I first saw, I didn't hear about it on TikTok, uh, but I did hear about it on Instagram, so on the Reels, and then usually through YouTube, because I follow a lot of booktubers and stuff like that. So that was one of the first places that I, I started seeing it go around. And I believe one of my favorite booktubers, she talked about it a lot, and she talked about how she cried at the end. So I was like, oh, intrigued, you know, like, I like books that make you kind of feel things. So I was really excited about that. Um, So that's how I heard about the book. Okay, so the next question is, what did you think of the author's writing style? Well, I really enjoyed it. I found it especially, I know we're gonna we're gonna gloat a lot about that certain husband and that certain chapter. That was like after I read that, I had to put it down a blind. I was like, damn. But yeah, it felt very it felt very cinematic and romantic, the writing. So like I just I adored it yeah yeah i agree cinematic is definitely the word for it because obviously it, it touches on you know old school hollywood and things like that but um definitely the way she wrote it made you kind of like sort of feel that that feeling of like you know being in in old hollywood dealing with the people and how they dealt with things and you know just the way she wrote it you could see everything right it was perfectly written i think she did such a good job at the, you know um 
using imagery, kind of showing us what Evelyn was seeing, what was happening. I loved especially the um, articles. You would get articles from like magazines. Yeah, like that. that was really I li like yeah, that was really enjoyable that she did that. And you know, you would see like you know the gossip and the trends and all this stuff. And it just, I think she definitely, um, she definitely captured what you would think old Hollywood was was like. Yes, I loved it. Like, I can't wait if they ever did do. I think Netflix eventually is going to do an adaption. So, you know, me and you are going to make it a popcorn night. <laughs> yes. And I really hope that, like we said, we were talking about that one scene. I really hope they do that one scene justice because that one deserves like everything. <laughs> just that. Yes. One, I think just that one chapter was like, you know, it definitely it showed what she's capable of. And I know that for me, towards the end as well, I was just like, ooh, like I it took a second. I was like, damn, like that was, uh, like, yeah, I was, I like, was like, yeah, damn. I was snapping at everything. I was yes. like, ooh. <laughs> so that was, that was a really good scene. Um, okay, so in the next question is, who is your favorite character? That is really hard because we spend most time with like Evelyn Hugo. So I guess the the right answer would be Evelyn Hugo. I guess another one I really liked was um, Harry. I feel like I wish we would have been inside Harry's mind too. Like I hope one day she'll do like a, a book on his side or something, even if it's a novella. But I guess, you know, um, with Harry and Evelyn, yeah, those are my two favorite. Because I, I feel like Monique, at least uh the present day reporter wasn't fleshed out as much and her scenes were very minimal and short. So I felt like maybe they could have explored Monique as well, because to me, I found her interesting too, with, but she didn't give us too much tidbit. And, and it ultimately her is in service. Everything is in service to Evelyn. So it's really, really hard to pick somebody a favorite when Evelyn is so sent to stay, honey. <laughs> yeah no i mean it's a testament to who evelyn was right being in the being at, in the highlight and the limelight you know being at the center of attention i would agree also that harry though was a favorite character of mine i would have loved to have um definitely if she could do like just a book on harry right like his life what he went through being that you know obviously we learned through the book that he is gay and then like you know growing up and wanting to become part of hollywood and all that stuff like i feel like his character must have gone uh like if he was a real person must have gone through a lot of trials and tribulations to get to where he yeah. is and like the things that he had to do and everything like that so I, I, his character definitely is very interesting i'll have to agree with you about monique though yeah she was definitely not as fleshed out as i would have liked her to be um definitely it's you know she's a service character to to evelyn she's just kind of there to focus on evelyn so that that is a little disappointing um so what part of the book do you think struck you as particularly emotional hmm there was multiple multiple parts like there was the whole like abusive second husband mm -hmm. um don right don yes his you know that whole turmoil and hot mess and her finding herself out of that was particularly like emotional especially that he kind of comes back in another chapter and it makes mm -hmm. me like angry with Evelyn and I'm like oh my god but I guess the whole thing makes me emotional because like the biggest twist of Seven Husbands is that you know Evelyn Hugo herself is bisexual mm -hmm. so therefore she has actually technically a wife even though in those times you know you can't you know same-sex marriage wasn't allowed so like I guess anytime that angst of her was Celia is it Celia? Cecilia Cecilia yeah yeah like any of that like just wrench and then of course what happens to Harry later on which it's a good twist because I that that's one thing I did appreciate because I was a little bit nervous that they were gonna go with the stereotype, even though those stories are valid, but I thought it was gonna be like an Aves like storyline. But no, it didn't not that it's not there, 
as in the background of history, but it, it's not that. But yeah, anything with Harry. With Harry, I had to like, you know, put it down and like process it. Right. For me, um, the um, I wouldn't say it's particularly emotional, but it is the the section that gave me like the most in terms of just feeling was the scene we were talking about um the chapter 28 with her 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 lover uh, i think his name was mick right it was mick reva right something like that he's the one that she um the rock star no sorry i'm trying to remember now no rick mick reva is the one that she ends up that we were talking about that she ends up marrying at the chapel and stuff like that yeah um, i think for me that scene was like probably my favorite and particularly emotional because I think it gives us real huge insight into Evelyn herself like how she is calculating how she looks at people and the world kind of you know she's a little judgmental she's a little like you know like um I have the chapter open I remember she, she says here in this one it's just so unoriginal and laughably transparent feeding you the same line he fed the papers about his last wife and so like I, I feel like that chapter I think because of the way it's written obviously it's written in the second perspective so like the way it's written I I just feel like we get fully like the kind of person that Evelyn was because you know obviously the whole book is about her and we talk discuss her a lot and you know we get to know her fully but just seeing her and the way she was um like I said calculating the way she like looked at this person and was like I know the next steps and those next steps did follow like she knew this guy to a T knew who he was knew what he was gonna do knew what the public was gonna do it was just like you know so Evelyn that chapter and I really enjoyed it and I, like I said I, I ended it the last line of course being like and you think if only they gave out Oscars for this shit right shit. yeah like, shit, I was dude. Like, You're like damn that's like, when I was snapping yeah <laughs> Like, Evelyn is just so, like, it, I, I feel like in that chapter is her, like, it's very raw, like, very her. And I, I think that one was, for me, my favorite of, of uh, and particularly emotional. Yeah, for, for sure, that would be my favorite. But emotional, when I think, when you ask that question, I think more sadness, more like, you know. Yeah. So I didn't correlate that. to No, no, they, I mean, it, it doesn't was matter. That. It's however you interpreted the question. I didn't particularly feel super emotional about any of it to be honest i mean um there were parts of it you're that heartless I was like, you're heartless <laughs> there were parts of it that i was shocked and parts of it that i was like you know wow you know or parts of it that i was sad i mean there are a lot of sad moments but you know I, for me it wasn't super like you know that i felt any big thing until this chapter i really felt like it dove me into the book uh, and yeah. more so than any other scene now a quick question to bounce off that mm -hmm. um how do you feel overall? Because for me, the 0.5 of what it loses in my rating is because of the ending. And I don't know if we want to go too much into the ending at all until yeah. maybe later on in this video. No, 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 go but ahead. like, yes, like I feel like Evelyn technically kills herself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then that like it, it left me a bit. Like, I just don't like suicide in general. Mm -hmm. So that is a trigger warning for anybody who does read it. So it's like, oh, it was such a wonderful journey and everything. And then that just left a sour part of me. I was like, damn it. I just didn't. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I can't. I, I guess I can, I can see your point of view. I get what you're saying. But I also... For me, it just, it was Evelyn. She is in control yeah. of her life. I don't think that it took away from me because I, like, I, like, like you hear about people all the time, like, going through something. We, oh, we do, we do have to put a preference that she mm -hmm. does have cancer. The cancer came, came yeah, back or something. Cancer. Yeah, it's not like, uh, you yeah. know, yeah. Her daughter dies of breast cancer and then she ends up having breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, like, the fun part well not the fun part but the interesting about <laughs> part about the breast cancer was the fact that her boobs were like her thing right like that was her yeah like it was such a big part of who she was and then for that to be like the thing that killed her was interesting but I mean I, like I said for me I've read about people who like are suffering they're going through the things that they're going through in life let's say like especially people who have a, a 
an illness that is going to, you know, kind of rock their world and be very difficult to get through. And sometimes, you know, in, they're given the option, you know, do you want to like, do you want to end your life before you have to do all of that? And I'm a big proponent that if you are suffering immensely to the point where, you know, like nothing can be done about it, then you should have the choice. So like in Evelyn's case for me, while it didn't hit that particular like moment for her like she, obviously she could go through chemotherapy do all this other stuff but like I don't know it felt like for me just like who Evelyn was which is that she she had control of her life you know she wanted to yeah wanted it to be in her terms on her in the way that she wanted it and so like I could see someone like Evelyn deciding you know what I'm not gonna wait for something to get me I'm just gonna do what I yeah. feel and when I'm ready I'm gonna you know end my own life it's because at the same it's because at the same time i know we see evelyn as positive and stuff like that but i also see her immensely negative and i see her as a very narcissistic character Mm -hmm. so i didn't always agree with a lot of her decisions definitely and and also the suicide is also in service a bit of monique's character Mm -hmm. and then i found that also bad taste in my mouth what do you mean like um, you know she's kind of like you don't have to forgive me or if you could forgive me for the overall of why Monique and the puzzle piece of how she fits in the whole overarching thing you know you know I'm gonna be dead anyway and then Monique as a person because she did an article a few years back on you know hospice and like you know people who want to be put to sleep in in hospitals mm-hmm. so like you know like Monique had the chance to maybe save Evelyn and then Monique decided not to and it was just I don't know it's because I guess fundamentally the reason I have a problem with it is because I feel like suicide is never the answer Mm -hmm. so I feel like I would have tried to save someone even if they were narcissistic or evil to me but that's just a I guess so like not to delve too deep into it or anything but that's why I'm guessing it would falter a bit for me at least as like my moral (laughs) no I can understand that I guess the other issue in that you know in that on the reverse side of that is I do believe that people should have always a choice and so for me like you know I do agree that especially when it comes to like things like depression and stuff like that I think that suicide isn't the answer but there are obviously always circumstances that we don't understand about a person that we can't fully we don't fully unless we are them we can't ever fully understand the pain they're going through so yeah. that's the other issue that i have is that just like you know i i don't agree that it's that you should do it but at the same time since i do believe in choice i don't think that it should be taken away from you whether you want to continue living or not i mean you know choice also plays a huge part in it and yeah. i think sometimes when you think of like depression it's not the same as like for me, it's not the same as with Evelyn because Evelyn's choice has nothing to do with her being sad. It has to do with her own her, her own illness. While depression tends to be more of a mind. Do you disorder. think so though? Because the reveal is of like what she did to Monique's father. But do you think so, she was depressed about that? Because I don't. I don't. I, to me, to me, it was like a gray area. Mm, it was maybe. both. It was the cancer too. But oh, girl, you're rich. <laughs> you can have all this shit and all this disposal to try to help and make your your end life better. I think it's her also her guilt with Monique and her guilt of having to like cover up her father's, you know, like death. And I I don't know. There's like a fine line of like the cancer and the depression. It's just to me, it didn't sit right. But okay. I get you. At the end of the day, life is life is choice and choice well i mean i was gonna say that at the end of the day like depression doesn't it doesn't sit how would you put it like it's not a normal uh, not normal but it's not your emotions are being affected by something else entirely so you're not fully being truthful to sometimes like in sense of like if you say you want to die because you're depressed it's not always accurate you're more so saying i want to get rid of this weight i'm feeling i want to stop feeling sad i want to stop so it's not really like your brain is telling you yeah kill yourself but it's not doing it because it it's doing it's not doing it because it's the right thing to do or because you have no other options it's doing it because you have depression so that's where it's different for me because she doesn't technically do it because she's depressed and wants to kill herself she does it 
there's a multiple reasons i agree but it's not central to depression so that's why it's different for me like if this was a depressed character and she wanted to kill herself i would say yes save her but because evelyn is in a right state of mind i can't agree that she isn't doing it out of her own volition like it's not her complete choice you get i could kind of understand I, could, I, could, I get what you're saying i could kind of understand it but even if the book is written kind of within her mindset i still think there's like a line of like depression and you know yeah i mean obviously yeah her lover's gone her daughter's gone i mean she kind of feels like she doesn't really have anybody left anymore and you know you know she's now dealing with breast cancer so yeah there's elements of it but i personally i think she was in the right state of mind to make that decision but that's yeah but I'm I guess that's whatever. where we could do, yeah, we yeah. could disagree on that. It's great. So, exactly. Yeah, it's definitely, a, there's definitely a spectrum there. Some people are going to agree. Some people are going to disagree. Um. So that moves on to the next question. How did you feel about the reveal about why Evelyn picked Monique? Oh, I was like, <laughs> oh, this is problematic a little. <laughs> I felt a little bit. I I remember I remember I thought my original thing was gonna be that one of the original husbands was gonna be maybe her dad, but it it, it didn't end up being that. It was um Harry's lover, his okay. um lover after his first lover. So and then the oh my god, but like Evelyn getting the body and dragging it into the car and making it seem like the car accident was her dad. And always having that alcoholism tied with that. Like, I was like, oh, that is, that is, damn. And then sadly, it is like the only, you know, the only Black characters. And they're in service to, regardless of her being Hispanic, she's still white Hispanic. Right. So it's just, it to me, it was a bit problematic. And then, oh, I just felt like, we could have had more with Monique as well. Yeah. No, yeah, it definitely took took a turn that I can't say that I enjoyed either. I think that's why it drops it down for me. Because it's Yeah, like, exactly. It's like really like I mean, there just could have been it could have been anything else, I think, you know? Like it could have been anything at that point. Any reason why she could have wanted Monique to be that, you know? Or, you know, just like yeah i i would agree that yeah especially the fact that these were the only like like important black characters and how it's being handled by evelyn and how it was handled by the author it definitely is like it leaves a lot to be desired and you're just kind of like i don't know if this is the route you should have taken <laughs> For yeah sure. like i remember i remember at the beginning of the book when monique describes herself as like an oreo like you know a black woman but like acting white inside or whatever i remember flipping the book because you know the author's head is like super big and i'm like hmm <laughs> uh, but i don't know because that's a bigger conversation and a yeah. bigger thing of like can you know white authors write black characters i think we should be able to write any character but like maybe do a little bit of homework maybe like you know it's a, a little bit a little bit weird but it's, yeah. it's it's she's not malicious i didn't find like the book was malicious at all or at least in my point of view you know it is problematic it could it's have a been little tone a little tone a little tone deaf that's the perfect word thank yeah. you for helping me there no because worries. like yeah like yeah with, I felt with like... sensitivity readers being a thing now it's definitely like probably she would have been better off having and hiring sensitivity readers like someone who can kind of show her like you know is this right or is this wrong are, are we sure that we yeah. have to go this direction yeah like for example we're hispanic so to to contrast with that with evelyn hugo herself you know i felt like she did at least research in like rita hayworth like she was uh, evelyn hugo was like a combination of different hollywood stars mm -hmm. and then all these things were a combination of things that actually happened throughout history history of how you know hispanic actresses would dye their hair blonde would you know hide and change their name and hide their ethnicity so all those things do exist so at least with the hispanic way of it and even even when like evelyn hugo does like a really weird clap back 
towards Monique about, oh, I'm Hispanic and I'm also bisexual, honey, like kind of like, you know, I found it, well, Hispanic people clap back like that and they don't see their own racism sometimes. Yes. So I'm like, at least that's believable within Evelyn Hugo's context. Right. So like, but I, I, I feel like at least with Monique, you know, I would suggest maybe hearing Black voices on that. Okay. So um, that moves us into our next question is, did anything frustrate you about the book? So we talked a little bit about the whole, you know, with Monique being a, you know, a, a Black character and how her family and her situation was handled. I know the other thing you wanted to talk about was the fact that Monique is such a small character. Yeah. I wish it would have been more elaborated because even I wanted to know more about her own divorce. Like, because I didn't really get any of her history as as well it would have been awesome to like at least because for example i could ask you really quick did you start to feel oh my god another husband we have another husband we have another chapter like it started to like drain a bit what would have been an awesome added chapter would have been we got instead of one of you know evelyn's exes get monique and then her husband becomes a chapter. That would and be like good, a bonus. Yeah. Like in the that middle, would have been, definitely, yeah. Yeah, like in the middle to cut like that a bit of monotony. A break, yeah. yeah, a bit of break of all the husbands and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. And then that's the, the only frustrating thing, like with the Monique situation. Just yeah. like, I think it could have been handled a bit better. Yeah. I think the only thing that makes it difficult was obviously... it it was a reveal the fact that you know why evelyn had yeah. picked her so it's kind oh, of hard wait. before i forget because i remember when we when we had finished the book or whatever yeah. me and you said if they would have it would have just been okay if monique and the father would have been like white characters if they were like just changed mm -hmm. it wouldn't have been so problematic and it would have just like fl flowed better but you know with the whole with all those things it brings those weird connotations yeah there's definitely it's definitely yeah it's definitely a hard it's a definitely a hard place to be because yeah yeah on the one hand like why is it that this only happened to the black characters but then on the other hand you know if it had just been full of a cast full of white people like you know, is that really like fair? Is that really right? You know, like why can't there be black characters in the book and stuff like that? So it's definitely like a t a two a, a double edged sword in, in a way, you know, because obviously you want to have more diversity in your writing and everything like that, but you know, at the same time, it's like yeah, it's just like the way she did it. I think it's just like I said, it just it leaves. It leaves just a bit of a bad taste in your mouth. So it's just hard because, yeah, you're you're in a weird place. You're like, how would she have handled that better? And, you know, like I said, I think that for me, if she had hired sensitivity readers, it would probably they would have told her to do something different. And maybe it would have changed the scope of the book in that regard and maybe would have made it better. But I don't know if she did that. And, you know, I don't know if she really went the right way with it, but yeah um but yeah that was the last of my questions so i was just wondering any last thoughts any feelings anything that you want to bring up i guess we could we could ask we could bring it back to like you know our favorite husbands our favorite like little 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 chapters or our favorite like just okay. with the husbands okay. like yeah i felt like i love that chapter that we already spoke of but then i also liked the 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 sex positive chapter with the french director right. i kind of like yeah i kind of like that one too and that's also that's realistic to some hollywood stars on how like later on they do marry a director who's like just so fascinated with them mm -hmm. and stuff like that so the, yeah. that that would be another one of my favorite husbands yeah and i would say that I, was kind of sad for me because of the fact that she she thought maybe she could love him until she realized that he just saw her as like a sex symbol she just saw yeah. her as like if she was just this thing for her she was a she was an oscar for her you know like just a, 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 a something a statue without any real like emotions and like she's you know she's trying to she was trying to make it be something and that that was kind of heartbreaking for sure yeah and then i guess we could also talk about the differences between like 
old Hollywood and new Hollywood and do we think it has changed? I think there's more positive now a little bit, like as in like casting diversity. I'm not talking yeah. about the executives and the CEOs and, you know, but at least, yeah. at least Harvey Weinstein has been taken down. Yeah, no, so, there's you know, definitely, there's definitely changes. And I think it's just changes that were, that were going to come eventually because yeah exactly as we learn more about the industry as we learn of how things work you know it was like i was reading it was like going back a little going a little bit to that whole thing with jeanette curdy right it's like you're reading about these young actors who at some point they their parents had full control of their money but then as time went on we were like wait a second now we can build like a trust fund for these kids so that when they turn 18 they have their money and their parents don't get to just use that money and do whatever they want because a lot of the time the parents were just shoving these kids into hollywood right to get their money and you know now we have stuff in place for that you know we have child labor laws and stuff like that and now with the you know recently obviously with the me too movement and then the whole harvey weinstein thing yeah definitely it's moving in a direction that is way more positive and like you were saying now there's more diversity there's more, you know, it's 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 definitely trending in a better direction than it ever was, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly. Just the amount, yeah. like, recently, right, though, the amount of, of, of queer characters that we've had that are now turning into shows, you know, it's it's just become a little more accepting and a little more... Yeah, and like Jenna Ortega and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Like, Hispanic actresses are not changing their you know ethnicity or changing their names and then also like west side story you know and all of that casting and not having to like you know tan her skin even more (laughs) and stuff like that so like yeah hopefully it gets even better but it's yeah it's it's also the glamorizing of hollywood because i still like it as like a random genre (laughs) like you know you know the glamorizing of it of red carpets and the green dresses and the spectacle of it all yeah but yeah no yeah for sure that definitely highlights the positives of hollywood which is just that you know being able to see these actors and you know having them talk about you know uh, you know make books into movies and make history into movies and stuff like that and how much we enjoy these actors and you know how much we like them and how much we tend to idolize them right because even if you're not super crazy like a crazy fan who starts to follow one of them into their house we still idolize them a little bit right we follow them on instagram we get to see what they're up to how many times have you been like oh i wonder how so-and-so is doing from this movie and then we look them up and we see they're older and they're doing this you know we still kind of like hold them in high regard and we still like end up loving these people that we never met that we don't know anything about and you know we still care about them and we care when something bad happens to them and we care when something happy happens to them and whatever so like there's definitely you know your positive intermix with your negative and hopefully as years go on and we start to see them more as the human people they are that you know things get better in the industry for yeah everybody exactly because it's still sadly it's still prevalent at least for like queer actors Mm -hmm. they're still told by some of their agents like you have to hide your sexuality because if not you're you won't get as many lead male roles or lead female roles thank god hopefully that changes more because it's still leaning towards positive but i still feel like they're still like they're still held back yeah of course yeah so yeah it hasn't changed obviously completely but it is moving in a in a generally positive direction so hopefully as the years go yeah it'll be better yeah because a lot of like you know like i said that evelyn hugo borrows a lot from um a lot from you know hollywood and everything it was like it also borrowed from males as well male hollywood stars and how they had to hide their sexuality Mm -hmm. and they couldn't come out and they had to like imagine them living that in the times of now (laughs) like with instagram and the media and all of that oh my god because at least evelyn was smart enough that she could um she had people in the tabloids in her pocket so she was able to manipulate sometimes the news and the and the news letting the news heads so the headlines the headlines there we go so you know that was one fun thing, like you said, when the some chapters, they had like a, a little recap news article and it's all like, oh, she was spotted. Da, da, da. Like, it's like, I, I like that. But yeah, but overall, the journey was fun. It was a really, really enjoyable read. Yeah. 
we have about two minutes left. Just letting you know. <laughs> so uh, that leads word. us into our last question. Question is: Would you recommend this book? Yes, I would. I would still recommend it. Yeah, I would preface it with you know, you know, some you know, the Monique character and stuff like that. But it's still a fun journey, and right. hopefully, maybe the movie adaptation fixes it more. Yeah, that would be great if we add a little bit more yeah because definitely that's all I was missing I think was just you know obviously the situation with I think Monique right needs to be a better like it, it needs to be fixed in general her character Monique needs to be fixed because other than that the book was really fun it was really interesting and like you said it was a fun journey but um and obviously Evelyn Hugo herself and her 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 cast of characters they had a lot of um they're very vivacious they were very like they they obviously had lived experiences and the only one missing that i think was monique so definitely yeah. that's the the thing that would um that would be the problem but yeah i also would recommend this book i think it's really a good read. yeah and you know i think it would be good for a lot of people to to read it and to maybe express what they think and how they think it could have been done better and you know what they think you know obviously how things could have been handled, I think, would be great. But yeah, I definitely recommend this book to everyone as well. Yeah, especially if you love Hollywood glam mm -hmm. and you know those like those vibes. Definitely, exactly. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I think that is the end of the review for us. We're about to run out of time here, but uh, join us hopefully for our next discussion, which will be my dark Vanessa. Dark Vanessa. I am excited to talk about that book because that book was uh, that book was painful. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, I can't wait to get. <laughs> I can't oh, wait to get into it. Um, I believe the author was K. Elizabeth Russell. And yeah, so hopefully we'll see you guys in the next one. And I'm going to leave the comment, the questions down below. So maybe you guys can answer it and let us know how you felt about the, all of the questions that we asked. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.